This video aims at explaining the process of starting and stopping user data sessions using AT commands on a Linux host system. This process is applicable to all Sierra wireless Qualcomm-based modules, including products from the WP, EM, MC, and RC families. Note that you can contact your authorized distributor in case of questions and can refer to the source for additional information. Let's begin by starting the terminal. Start by logging in as root to avoid password or permission issues on any of the interfaces or devices on the system. Once you've logged in, you can run the commands as displayed on screen. ls dev shows the list of all currently available system devices. This is a standard Ubuntu 14.04 laptop with a 4.4 kernel. And if config shows the current networking interfaces. The next step is to power the MC7455 on. This takes a few seconds for the units to power themselves and a few more seconds for the device to enumerate onto the system. By running the ls dev command, you can view all the interfaces, including the QCQMIs and the TTY USBs. The TTY USB ports always enumerate in the same order. The TTY USB 0 is a diagnostic monitoring port. TTY USB 1 is an NMEA port, and TTY USB 2 is an AT command port. There are some additional Ethernet interfaces as well, one for each of the PDP contexts that you can create. Next, we'll take a look at the drivers that the device or unit is using. Here we're looking at the Gobi serial driver and the GobiNet driver. Although open source drivers may also work on most systems, we recommend that you use the Sierra wireless drivers, which are available on the source, and remove the open source ones from the system to prevent them being used. You can now see the drivers that are loaded onto the system. If you scroll up, you'll be able to see the Gobi serial and GobiNet drivers. We will now use the Minicom command tool to connect to dev TTY USB 2, which is the standard AT port for any Qualcomm-based unit from Sierra Wireless. This unit has a standard model MC7455 with a 2.32.11 firmware on it and uses the generic PRI file as opposed to the RISE, AT&T, or KDDI files. As you can see, the CID1, CGD, CONT1, APN setting is incorrect for the SIM card that we've inserted into the unit. We will be changing it from wap.vodafone.co.uk to everywhere, which is the standard APN for EE. If the APN is not correct, the unit will probably not be able to attach to LTE. However, since the APN was correct, the SIM card has attached to LTE, which is indicated by the 7 on the end of the COPS command. Let us now take a look at the G status information to check if it's registered on LTE successfully and to check the IP address the device has received from the network. This is specific to LTE and is not done for 2G or 3G. Let's take a look at the IP interfaces again. As you can see, no IP addresses have been assigned yet. To assign the IP address, let's go back and start up a data session through dev TTY USB 2. You can start this session using the at exclamation SC act command which will initiate the Ethernet over USB link. As you can see, the network manager is running and it's already discovered the interface. However, many customer systems will not be running network manager and as a result, they will need to perform this operation themselves. You will now be able to view the IP address assigned to the device, 100.115.214.57 and we can ping to the Google DNS server. We have an open IP connection which you can use just as a standard Ethernet interface. Next, come back to the USB 2 port and shut down the connection using the SC ACT command again. Note that you can refer to the AT command manual for details on the SC ACT command. And as you can see on screen, the interface is being brought down, the network manager has seen it, and it has closed the connection. However, most Linux systems will run even without the network manager. You now know the steps that can be followed to start and stop user data sessions using AT commands on a Linux host system.